Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Reinsurance Podcast. I'm Jared Lee. And we started this conversation because we just have to talk about the the elephant in the room here, which is for some reason, every single party in a reinsurance transaction keeps their own record of the deal done yeah. in all of its gory, intricate details, right? You've got yeah. a buyer, potential, potentially multiple brokers, and then tens of, of reinsurers across loads of different layers yeah. and things as well, right? But each one of those has a, sp a spreadsheet, a database, yeah. Uh, it's something that they're using to record each and every quote authorization yeah. signing, you know, that they've got on each of those deals. Like, why has that not been replaced by something modern? Well, and it's it's funny because the the real problem is that these fifty sixty parties have their data all like somewhat fundamentally different. Which, even if you use like a low percentage of missed keying or mistyping data, like the error rate is going to be huge. That's not even including the fact that 70 different people went away and re-keyed all the, like the, the aggregate cost of the time is profound. Mm. But I think the bigger problem for the industry is the fact that when something happens, everyone goes independently and says like, well, let me check my version of this thing, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and that just is, is a shocking sort of problem. It's a problem that the industry recognized when they tried to solve it with blockchain. We got very excited about blockchain. We're like, we will use this moment to fix this thing. I don't think it needs blockchain, right? We don't believe that's, but the principle is still there of like, that cannot be the case. This sort of 70 different versions of the truth can't yeah. be the case. No, completely. I think that's where we came at it with super C deals, for example, where if you put into the hands uh, of the scene and the broker, this tool that gives you a record of the truth that you can track live, then nowadays APIs are a thing. So yeah. you can just keep track of that deal in one place and then afterwards, or, or in real time, in fact, send that information yeah. into back office systems, et cetera. Yeah. I, but I think most insurers, brokers, reinsurers are still stuck with a lot of mainframe technology, mm -hmm. still trying to get off their legacy, and so haven't had the opportunity yet to really start making the most of APIs that you know we use every day in our consumer lives. You yeah. know, we, we use things like Skyscanner and ping all the different airlines to see yeah. what the latest prices are for different routes. Yeah. I, and update their their own systems where we make a booking. It's just getting that kind of technology yeah. into our industry, not creating a blockchain, as yeah, you say. Yeah. But you know, well, because like the the source of truth does exist. It's just in a filing cabinet, right? It's it's the actual contract itself. When you look into all the systems, those are all individual mainframes and on prem solutions, etc. And and that's what sort of makes this so difficult to have. Like, what is the price for this thing? And so many other industries have solved for that. But like in every other way, in every other sort of space that we're in, like this seems absurd. Like I want to go buy two more shares of Apple. So I'm going to call someone and I say, can I have two more shares of Apple? And they say, of course you can. And then I go into my little spreadsheet and I wrote two. And I, I look it up on, on the web and I put the price that it was. And I hope that my broker puts it in his little system and i'm hope that somewhere when he bought it off the exchange like that system also recorded it but mm -hmm. obviously even if i have a broker that i called i would log into my account to in an hour and i would see it and everyone's system would show that same thing but in you know reinsurance right now it's like everyone goes away and p makes a little adjustment on their own <laughs> little yeah, yeah. record and then we hope that in a year and a half or 10 years time when a, an event happens we sort of all look back and go, oh, yeah, that is, in fact, the same thing. <laughs> I think I think our industry is very guilty of half modernizations or, or introducing. Ooh, that's an excellent term, and I think that's exactly right. Yeah. yeah, like introducing computers a little bit to try and slightly appease an audience or slightly change a problem, but not really tackle the root of the problem. And, and for me, the, probably the standout analogy here is if you look at older versions of banking systems, you know, you'd have a ledger that was literally a book that would be kept each branch of a bank. Mm -hmm. And when they got to the point where you could take money out of your bank account from any bank branch, they had to have a system of communication between the different branches to know, oh, you know, that that account for that person has decreased slightly. They've made a withdrawal. So you need to update your book as well if you're keeping a copy or they're going to have to call each other and so on. And eventually that's all been replaced and it's all yeah. online. Actually, it's still kind of the same in insurance rate. Right? People are just using spreadsheets in each of their international offices or completely different systems of records, organically homegrown or 
brought in as a one-off from a provider where they track just for that office what deals have been done. Yep. And then there's another part of their business in a different region or part of an acquisition they made that has a completely different system that doesn't talk to that system uh, about how many deals they've done yeah. and for what value, et cetera. Yeah. One of the, the really interesting things in our space is all, all the reinsurers will have some level of capacity that they're willing to deploy into a class or, or what have you. Um, and they're very open about what that is, right? But the brokers have almost no way to communicate that more broadly. As you said, like the team in London might know what the capacity was they were told and they sort of have bought a, they bought a couple programs sort of take away that capacity, but the team in Spain doesn't know that yet or they've not communicated that to their US colleagues or similar. Because there is no sort of central like, how is that reinsurer looking on the available capacity left? And, yeah. you know, am I calling other bank branches every single day and trying to get that update? Like it's, it feels like, there are some really, really quick wins if we could let communication move more freely, if we could let systems talk to each other more easily. And I think we're chipping away at that. The other thing I would maybe, as in, if I would bucket it in two camps, I think um, partial modernization sort of efforts being one camp, but then also trying to do just literally everything at once and then going, oh, that's super hard and then quitting <laughs> and and not being able to sort of like chip away and go, okay, we need to make it, it's this thing and then we'll do this. Like it's, yeah. you know, it's, we we make the problem too big in some way. So if you use that, um, that ledger analogy, it's like, well, well, that would make sense. But instead of just making a ledger we all share, mm. we're going to also and insert transform all of banking which was not how they did it right mm -hmm. but i think we also fall foul of over engineering a solution in many ways and rather than just saying well you just need this information that i have let's make that let's make that easier so it's uh <laughs> on to on to packs uh, related things let's talk about the the gold mine that is completely untapped yes I, data being the gold in this case and by untapped i actually mean sort of tapped and then thrown away again which is the odd thing we seem to do in our industry. So mm. underwriters, every time they get a deal and, and brokers and students, et cetera, they use this data in order to make decisions on the deal. And it's incredibly painful to extract. You know, they have to get the gold out of the ground, get the data out of all the different operating entities of the insurer in order to price the deal. They then have to put it into various systems in order to get the deal done and to calculate a price and so on and so forth. And at the end of the deal, everyone says, great job, guys. We figured out how much that gold is worth. Chuck it back in the ground <laughs> where we got it from. And uh, we'll dig it all out again next year and see what happens. It just astonishes me yeah. that nobody's using that gold to make anything pretty. Yeah, uh, it, <laughs> it's a good analogy. And and you're, you're exactly right where that is inherently valuable, but it's only valuable if you if you can use it. And and it's like, oh, they, they put it in a jar and it's like they bury the jar of gold. So, well, okay, you have it, but like it's, mm -hmm. and so my, if we think about submission data in this analogy, it's every submission pack that goes out, then it's like, oh, well, that was the Marine purchase that sits in the Marine team's mm -hmm. T drive under their 2023 accounts or their 2024 yeah. accounts or, and it sits in that, like the broker has their own like client folder within that Marine product. Mm -hmm. like, and so- it's it's not only is it a standardization issue, it's not only is a speed issue, but it's like there's actually important insights for what this insurance company is doing, how their book is evolving, and what that means for their purchase. And it's all but lost it's in utterly just like okay, well, it's yeah. in a jar back in the ground, but like I, it, you cannot use it to do anything of value with. Yeah. And I think the really interesting thing that we're starting to be able to untap is like, what if? <laughs> You could actually put it all in one place. And what if it all, you, know, mm. you pull it together and then you could look at it and begin to think about what could you make now that you have all this here to, you know, in one sort of space. And, and I think our clients are seeing that and they're seeing the opportunity that it's unlocking a lot more mm. creativity around what they could do rather than just go, well, yeah. got yeah. it done. <laughs> if you deal, could, deal it done in. It's, it's like, how do you take, not just like how has, the one deal, the one detail I could be bothered to key in I, and see how that detail has changed over the last five years that I've managed to key it in, but rather to take everything we've done 
all of the submission packs across all of the deals we've done and to measure how the details of all those submission mm-hmm. packs have changed across our entire portfolio over an extended period of time. Nobody can do that in the market at the no. moment. No. Until now. Until now. <laughs> so that's all we've got for you today in the snippet episode of the Reinsurance Podcast. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>